I'm Derek Dennis, ABC News, here at the Beryl Elites Alternative Investments Conference. And I'm here with former NBA All-Star player Charles D. Smith here, who has had an amazing career in the NBA, but an equally amazing career in the world of business. And we're going to get into it in a moment. First, uh, Charles, thanks for joining me here at the Beryl Elites Conference. Talk about, first of all, your time, 10 years in the league, right? Yes. I'm, I'm sure it was amazing. You've got stories all over. Uh, but being a basketball player, would you say prepared you for the world of business? Absolutely. Um, first, let me say I'm happy to be here for this interview. Yeah. I was never an all-star, but I am an all-star former <laughs> player in business. So <laughs> we'll take that. I got right? you. Yeah. But yeah, my 10 years in the league have prepared me uh, for business. It gave me the foundation of understanding how to be a solutions provider based on all the failures that I've had. Uh, I think a lot of former pro athletes can do exactly what I did. It's a matter of connecting the dots and understanding what they've learned in the sport to transition to understand how that applies in business and what the label of that is. And I don't think a lot of guys make that connection and women, they don't make that connection. Well, let's let's talk about the sports aspect first. You You do hold a record in terms of block shots, right? Well, yeah, I've heard that, that I'm still in the top 150 in uh, all-time shot blockers in the NBA, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of your contemporaries have tried to make the transition, and some have, from playing on the, on the court to going into business, big business, right? Why are you different? Well, first of all, I think that uh, the... The world, I'm not going to say here in the U.S., it's the world, yeah. has a certain mindset of what success is after you play professional sports. Mm -hmm. um, they look at big numbers and they only focus on athletes that are still making, you know, 30, 40 million a year. However, there are a lot of athletes that are making three, four, five a year and doing very well. And that's still in the one percent of the uh, of the country. But we don't think of it that way. And I've met a lot of them over the years. Um, I think overall, what makes me a little uh, unique is, first of all, I probably would have gone broke just like everybody else. But it was my education and business acumen where I became self-sufficient that gives me an ability to always make money, to utilize my brand and relationships, know how to do that, create deals, create opportunities, uh, help others understand what I can do for them and how I can do for them and just drum up business for myself yeah. and others. So I think that's a, a, a bit different. So what kind of businesses are you in? Run, run down the, the list. Well, it's not businesses. Right now, I think um, I've gone through a process during my career where people would say, you know, what is he doing now? <laughs> um, the beauty of that for 20 years was an education and learning a lot of different traits where they're melded together, where I have a lot of knowledge in a lot of different areas. Uh, I'm not afraid to stretch myself and try something new. Uh, I'm not afraid to fail. Um, I'm not afraid of rejection. And uh, I like unique experiences. And so when you're able to do that, you learn a lot and you open yourself up to a lot of opportunities. So, um, but you're doing real estate, you're doing some... So right now, today, it's more real estate. I think in the past, um, a, a lot of opportunities have, again, put me in that uh, position. So for years, I did um, different real estate tr uh, transactions in the south side of Chicago. Uh, uh, Tenley Point was about a five... I negotiated about a $5.5 million contract. Um, and these are the 70s, 80 blocks of south side. I'm trying to think... Uh, the Auburn uh, property, that was about a $20 million transaction. Um, uh, Chateau property was about a $25 million transaction. I'm negotiating a $127 million transaction in Detroit right now. And I have my own in Zanzibar, that's $180 million transaction. Talk about Zanzibar. Uh, was that one of your early sort of ventures? Uh, this is in Zanzibar, this is where there's a culmination of everything that I've learned is being utilized to uh, do what I'm doing in Zanzibar, which is building a sports and entertainment district there. And I'm having a lot of fun with that because 
uh, from technology to real estate to retail and relationships and traveling globally and understanding that to be a global ambassador, you have to willingly go into a culture and want to understand that. With all of those values, it's helping me with my first project in Zanzibar, which is in the continent of Africa. Amazing. Talk about some lessons learned. You know, um, you know, a lot of people, our viewers watching, were gonna know or wanna know, how, how did you do it? Is it about relationships as much as it is about just being, you know, curious about so the business? It's, yeah, it's a little curiosity, but it's mostly relationships. Um, I think the most um, important currency we have as hum human beings is not our money, our good looks, our material things. It is human connection. It is relationships. And I've learned that and I covet that. I like to have fun and build relationships and work with people that I actually like and care about. And I think I failed royally a lot of times when I traveled initially around the world and got involved in business and I didn't understand the cultures. I can give many stories of failures and um, that turned into successes in North Korea, in um, Indonesia, um, in China, uh, in the UAE. I failed in the relationships, but I recovered because I pay attention to my failures and I listen to what people have to tell me. And on that recovery, you get more tools on your tool belt to become a a, a global ambassador based on cultures because you learn and you want to get better at it. You're also, or have sort of tried to teach people the way, right? Uh, people who, who ask you, how do I get into business? How do I do what you do? Has that been difficult to do? Well, um, good question. I think that um, people respond more to what they want than what they need. And when you go to someone to provide a need that they didn't ask for that you know that would be beneficial, people don't respond to that. Uh, so you have to, I've learned that you have to wait for someone to ask because then when you can provide value to them, they're more acceptable and willingly wanting to learn from you. Because the other but, way it feels like a sales pitch sort of, it, right? it feels like a sales pitch, but also, um, being a former pro athlete, going to someone with that pro athlete stigma that is negative worldwide, trust me, um, they really don't adapt to that. A lot of times uh, being labeled as a former pro athlete, even though I haven't played in 30 years, people almost have to look at diminishing themselves to work with you for you to be able to give them advice and help them uh, because of the negative stigma. But I've gotten over that hurdle over the years and um, I, I kind of moved past that and just move forward and, and, and build relationships and work with people. But the first question you ask, it is true. It's best to wait for people to ask for your help than to just go out and provide it. Yeah. So when, what's, your, what's your goal? Like, what are you trying to do? I mean, you don't, I'm sure you're well off enough where you don't have to work another day in your life. But you're working because you're passionate about it, right? Well, you know, I found that what I bring to this world and who I am, uh, I am a person that loves people and loves culture. Um, I like to move with purpose. I found that the best investment strategy that aligns with who I am is impact investing. Uh, because I, I love to do well and do good at the same time. I have the same excitement that I've been searching for from playing sport and impact investing. Uh, when I won the World Games and I'm celebrating on the floor with my, my, my teammates, I've searched for that throughout my whole life after sport and found that in impact investing. Uh, I found that in, in, on the continent of Africa. So I wake up every morning excited like I'm going to practice again. And I wish that every human being can find that. It's, it's, it's a hard find. You have to humble yourself to find it, but when you find it, there's nothing like it. And when you say impact investing, you mean investing so that it improves the lives of more than just one person, right? So you're making money, but at the same time, you're socially responsible. You're impacting the community. 
you're enabling and impacting the environment. You're doing things in that investment that has more and centric value than picking a uh, value investing, picking a stock that's trading less than its eccentric value. So I'm picking opportunities where the value is way more than the actual capital investing. And, and that's what I love to do. Yeah. How does it compare to playing? Well, like I said, you know, uh, a lot of uh, professional athletes search for that feeling that you had when you win big games, uh, uh, when you're practicing going into the finals and every practice means something. Uh, I found a great team that I put together with over 120 years experience now today. And uh, it's interesting because I drive the team as if we're in the playoffs. With all that experience, I say to them, don't talk to me about anything standard. There's nothing standard about me, this project and what we're doing. With all that experience, I wanna hear you tell me Charles, with all my experience, it's not going to take this amount of time. We're going to condense it in this amount of time because of what I've learned over the years. And that's just like the coaches talking to me going into the playoffs where we're practicing and tightening up our offense and putting defense strategies together to get an advantage. So that's applicable to me and what I learned to deal with my teams. Yeah. So last couple of questions. Uh, you look at, I'm sure you still watch basketball today. Uh, who's top of the list for you? Uh, individually? Individually. Well, I think me and everyone else is looking at Victor Wimbiyama because um, I've watched him and I listen to people say, um, you know, he's weak. Uh, they're going to bully him in the post. There'll be none of that. Let me tell you the game. Well, when you look at people like Kareem and Robert Parrish who played you know, 20 years in the league, they weren't bulky and big. You know what they talked about? Stretching, flexibility, and taking care of your legs because it pulls you up and down the floor. When Biamba, I've watched him stand and touch his knees, uh, his forehead to his knees and do straddles and that flexibility and understanding how to use your body. I don't care whether he puts on a pound or not, that kid's gonna be very special. And he might be the first one that we talk about, MVP, rookie of the year, all-star, and if they go deep into the playoffs uh, and, uh, and he goes to the finals miraculously, he'll be talked about in a way that we've never talked about another player their rookie year. You sound like a sports analyst. Is that uh, in your future, you think? I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> I've done the sports analyst thing and cold pizza and ESPN, and I've uh -huh. done college games. But um, my analytical skills right now are all about impacting investments and really uh, aligning family offices together to knowledge share and invest together. And uh, that's where I get my daily dosage of uh, uh, that spiritual confidence and faith that keeps me moving forward. All right. Anything else you want to add or say, Charles? No. I think it was a great interview. We got thank it. You. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good All right, to meet thank you. you. Thanks All so right, much. You got it. All right. I'm Derek Dennis, Barrel Elites uh, Alternative Investments Conference here in New York City. Thanks for watching. We'll have more later.